Hello and welcome back to another session of Sir Diamo, as Byron speaking. And I think in this session we will have a look at the documentation again and at our library because if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to configure a writer to, for instance, produce JSON-like stuff, then I need to be able to use options here. And right now I don't have that at all. And in order to use options, I would need at least a some sort of two string with options. And I think this two string with options will, as everything here, be based on two writer with options. And um, right now, as you can see, I, I do adhere to the third uh, kind of API. So I think I would actually do that, but I might say that, well, this is going to be um, similar or equivalent to dump, you know. So something like that I would write. And maybe I provide multiple methods which just call each other so that I have a dump as well that in fact just calls um, to string or something. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the um, spec says about these names. Dump. Dump, dump, dump. Here there are multiple dump links. Dumping native data structures to a character stream is done using the following stages, blah, 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 load. So dump and load. And is there something like dump all? No, this is Python specific. Yeah. So in a way, I'm totally free to, to do what I want to do. But I should be, you know, I should review this dump stuff and the multi-document stuff. I will do this when it's time though. So first, let's do the do writer, the specific, encode the specified struct oh, <laughs> into a YAML writer. So here we have a writer and the structure, a borrow of the structure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the specified with the given options to define how the serialization should, or well, how the character stream should look like. Something like that. And I think what I'm still missing here is line breaks and how line breaks are handled, but I think we will get there once we actually try to, to implement something. But this is maybe all about documentation with, let's call it with options. So this guy takes, takes everything and we also uh, take presentation details, options. And yes, I own them because I, I really prefer to own stuff. And usually most people, they don't, they, they generate an option structure just for the purpose of, of using it uh, in such a situation. So there is no need really to borrow this stuff. And yes, we need it anyway. So serialize a new, what do we have here? Sir source, source sir. Let's open the other one. So what do we have? Presentation detail. Uh, yeah, so how do we create such a formatter with options? There we go. That's how that goes. Yay. It's interesting that this still works. <laughs> um, but actually, we didn't change much. So the only thing that's really interesting to the current implementation is the current indent here. And this uh, obviously still works. So with options, so we say, well, with options. Uh, well, wait. Formatter. Where do we specify which standard formatter we want? I think I removed quite a lot of code there that dealt with this. So oh yeah, here with formatter, that's the one serializer with formatter and now we have a standard formatter with 
options. That looks good too, huh? And then we pass in some options. And of course the rider. Rider. Oops. It's interesting that that the borrowed rider that we have here uh, also works for the trait. That's kind of new to me. Usually I use borrow mat here so that we can use it as an own thing and as a borrow. But I think that, no, that, that still can be used. So if you want to be very uh, generous <laughs> and support a lot, you would probably use uh, as ref here or as mat or something, uh, which should be similar to borrow mat because that way um, you can own the value and you can also just borrow it mutably. Right now we don't really support that. So here we go with options. Serializer with formatter, then we pass in the writer and the format itself, which is a standard formatter um, with options, that one. That is what we want. And that should actually work. And uh, the rest is just the same. And this inline stuff, I will just remove it here because I think that's a bad idea. Let's refactor this a bit and remove all the inline things because that's that's optimization I consider once I have tests for benchmarks. So that's a bit of a refactor here. Okay, let's let's not do this. I will not I will simply not copy this inline thing. But refactor it maybe in a separate commit just to keep it separate. So options, presentation, details. Fine. So let's see if that works. We shall also export it and in that moment we probably have to export a whole bunch of additional things to writer with options then now the structures presentation details and with that I think we have to pull in a lot of stuff look escape bytes is public didn't know that so I guess we wanna yeah so the question here is how far do we want to go because that now goes into the global namespace but I think and and here we mix serialization and deserialization and if we provide with options, then we need presentation details. If we need presentation details, then we need a lot of other structures as well. But these could also be provided in the pub sir, right? This should be pub, I think. And um, yeah, let's let's keep this very, very simple, the top level. So let's do it like this. Let's see if that even works. Cargo build. Looks good. Uh, now we should actually see our beautiful documentation for everything. Yay! Looks good. So we have a scalar style, block scalar style. <laughs> Yeah, looks very good, I think. Mm -hmm. Lots of things are going to be reviewed here, obviously, but for now, oh yeah, and this JSON stuff. So here we go into a YAML string buffer, into a YAML vector. We don't even export the two vec, which we should probably do. To writer with options, to writer, and that is that. So let's also have a to string with options. Encode the specified struct into a YAML string with the given options to specify, to define how the character stream should look like to string no inline please with options because it also 
bumps up the compile time as the optimizer has to optimize each um, instance of the function in the moment it's being inline. And here everything is kind of inline. There's going to be a bulk of code. And I do not want that. The optimizer should make that decision, not me by force. Ah, to string with options, here we have options, which are presentation details. I like the term for some reason. And, uh, oh, shit. So if I need that, then I need to vec. Can I just, what's the to vec doing? Can I just combine this? Vec with, oh, the vec is used as writer. Yeah. Hmm. To vec with options. Yeah, in order to have a symmetric API, I would need to do that, unfortunately. And because we are insert and the kind of, you know, it's kind of there already, I think I wouldn't want to break the API. I wanna would want to stick to it to work with options. So this takes a value T and the options here. We just pass it along to string with options to back to back with options. That looks good. Nice and symmetrical. Yeah, the presentation details. Yeah, the the user will have to pull it from Sir, but I think that's okay. Uh, it's easy enough to figure out, I, I, I think. Better have a small global namespace. Okay, so now we can actually do this as well. To vec. with options. Pre presentation details looks good. Given options, I'm repeating myself, but hey, that's how it is. To define how the character stream should look like. Yeah, and now we say to writer with options. Like that. And provide the options as well. Cool, so now it's pa <coughs> it's totally passed through here to string, to string with options, blah, 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 but this should totally work. So let's see if it compiles. It does. Testing shouldn't be affected by that at all. And it is not. Nice. So I think that's going to be the API. Now the good news is that, oops, cargo doc will in fact generate something for us and we can review the documentation that we have so far. Look at that. Here it is. I don't like the looks of this so much. Uh, I mean, it is a re-export, that's nice, but I would be happy if this would be some sort of list because if we wouldn't re-export it that way... Huh. Maybe if we use individual... Let's see how that looks like. Um, so if we use two invocations of this, does it list them ind individually? Or does it always concatenate them? I would think it probably concatenates them. That wouldn't come to, oh, look at that. So I am able to kind of put it into a separate line, which I would prefer. That looks better than to writer to writer with options. Maybe I group these two. Yeah, maybe I group these pairs here because they kind of belong together anyway. And then we have to string to string with options. Let me have pop user like this, huh? Does that look good? 
think it will look good. Yeah, so that's nice to write it to string to vec with options. Boom. Presentation details. And there we go. And this is how we can specify how that stuff will look like. And sir, the sir module has all the rest. Presentation details has no documentation. Look at that. Um, oh, that's the import. Options to define how character streams will look like. Look like when, yeah, character streams will look like, actually that's obviously part of the serialization. I will not say this explicitly. Then we have um, the standard formatter. It's, yeah, it generates a stream of characters from serialization events, which is actually totally true. Events produced by values implementing the serialize um, the serialized trait. It supports uh, using the, by default, it will produce human readable YAML um, documents, maybe configured using using the presentation details structure to, well, produce documents, documents according to your requirements. I think that's more like that. Good, standard formatter is, and the serializer. The serializer is the one getting the events, right? To YAML. <laughs> structure for implementing serial, yeah. A structure, well, it's more like, um, Yeah, it, it receives re events, a receiver for serialization events, which are translated into a stream of characters. Um, the specific, the particular. Yeah, we will have to see how that goes as well. Uh, so the serializer right now has kind of no options here, even though it might need some of the options that are currently in the presentation details of the formatter. And this is something I haven't figured out myself now. I will just, you know, this will just happen as it happens. So as, as I said, maybe Maybe the, um, yeah, I, I don't know. You'll, you'll see about that. So I just want, want to have one piece of options here that maybe the serializer will have to access these or will have to delegate a whole lot more information to the serializer. Man, that's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be probably requiring us to change the architecture a bit. The particular format is specified using, well, is handled using, using a 
formatter implementation. Yeah, that's kind of how it is, but we'll see. That's still JSON after all. And now we have all the docs that there currently are in a rough form, that's fine. And as we see it right now, but by writing this, I kind of realized that, whoa, it's a bit odd. Way, look at that, escape bytes. Why is this pub? <laughs> I don't think I want this to be pub. No. And what else? Escape string, same thing. Of course we will keep them, but I don't want them. Good. I don't want them in the public interface, so that's just that. Looks good. So far so good. I think we are on a good track here, even though the actual implementation is like totally missing. Um, yeah, that's good. We could do things now. To string with options. So let's use to string with options here and then have YAML sir Yeah, I will I will bring them in. Use sir yeah, I think I can use YAML sir presentation details because I will need them a lot. So let's let's bring them in here. And then use to string with options, presentation details, JSON. This should be standard details that will work for us. Right now they don't do anything special. It will still not work. <laughs> but in theory that will produce perfect JSON for us. That's why we have these, right? Let's see how far we get. Uh, no. JSON is private C. Just found a bug. So both of these pub pub. Okay, and that's interesting. It tells me that I'm not using two of the examples. Oh, nice, I actually see all of them. I didn't see that before. I didn't realize it at least. So where is the warning, the compiler warning here? Constant item is never used to seven to eight. <laughs> Needs implementation. So let's mention it, huh? Um, sir, data, example to seven. No. Example to seven, like that. Same here. We have we, we got into the habit of doing that in all the other examples, but these are early ones. So here it's just not there. Sir, data, example to eight. Yay, that's it. So now we should get rid of the, of a few of these warnings and maybe it even, Unused import, third. Really? Look, just one warning. Awesome. Test structs fixed. Why did why do why did I think I need it? Well, no clue. So if I don't need it, I don't need it. Oh. Maybe I should make test just to regenerate the data structure. Nice. There is no compiler warning anymore. So what is this? This is mainly mainly docs, I think. Docs and yeah, API kind of Imp API add with options API. That way we are finally finally able to use custom options when running our 
tests. Additionally, the documentation was reviewed superficially and improved in the process. What else? Yeah, we are basically, yeah, we removed all compiler warnings. We are in a clean state as there are no compiler warnings left. Voila. Left for now. And we shouldn't forget to skip CI. Good, and the next thing I want to do is just a quick refactor. Then we might call it a session, it's a small one. I'm still kind of afraid to actually implement something, as you might see. We're kind of doing everything else before, but you know. So let's find all the inline stuff and kick it out. Mm, I think I want to have a regular expression and get the new line there and remove it with nada. No! So now what happened? Oh yeah, I want to have the trailing white space as well. So what about this? Ooh. But it shouldn't be multi-line, should it? Does this make a difference? <laughs> hmm. This matches too much. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm dumb. We want to constrain it to the start of the line here. Boom. So what are you saying now? Is this better? I'm not so sure about this one here. Maybe we'll just try it, huh? Better? Yeah, no, not better. It's too, still too much. Oh, it still matches the start of the line or something, huh? Can I match this separately and then put it back? Does it make a difference? No, it doesn't. Just an anchor. Huh. Okay, that was that. Okay, was my new line thing, I guess, that kind of triggered this. <laughs> Good, so now it's gone. Removed all inline statements. The optimizer can probably make that decision much better than we do. And just write, you know, it expands to a lot of code as well. So these look small, but they're not actually small. And yeah, I think YAML implementations are kind of slower by, by nature, even though with the serialization, in our case, doesn't necessarily need to be so much slower. But still, I would, I would just call this a, a refactor here. No. Refactor, uh, sir, remove all inline. Um, what is it? And all inline specifications, how's that called? Ah, damn it, I'm missing, I'm lacking the word in either, in any language. I don't know how to specify this. Removed all inline statements. Yeah, it's a statement, even though it's probably not a statement, strictly speaking. That way, the optimizer may decide when to inline and when not. I believe when looking at the standard library, you will see that most of the small methods are not inline anymore as it put compile times to a crawl and didn't necessarily improve performance as uh, well too much code was produced in the process. So that's how I de decide that we don't want that here. So that's quite a lot of definitions. 
but all gone. And of course, we want to skip skip CI. Boom. Yeah, I think that's worth a commit. And shall also conclude this session. So thanks for watching and have a good day.